right, whenever you guys are ready. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Cody Thompson. I'm Amber Kelly. Kara Gunzelman. And I'm Meredith Weber, and today we will be talking about our project, which was a Marion County Park and Lake user survey. So when Isaac came uh, to the class to kind of present about the lake and its issues, they said that one, there are many different interest groups that are concerned about future goals of the park and they have kind of conflicting views, and two, that they needed assistance in the collection of data and information to facilitate the development of a lake management plan. So we decided we could assist them best by creating a survey to help them collect some of that data that they're looking for. Um, and with our literature reviews, we learned that conducting visitor surveys in recreational settings are very difficult. Um, there are a variety of challenges. With Marion County Park and Lake, um, there are two points of entry. So intercepting visitors is, diff is difficult. There is a lack of interest in participating in surveys. And the visitors are there for a very short duration of time, so it's difficult to contact them. So we're hoping our survey can overcome some of these challenges. The objectives of our project were to create a survey that collects information on one, visitor and resident demographics. There are about 250 permanent residents around Marion County Lake, so their input is very important. Two, trip itinerary, what the visitors are doing during their trip to the lake. Three, opinions on the lake and park offerings. And four, opinions on lake policy issues, some of which you guys have talked about with the geese and such. Um, and then two, we wanted to use the data that they've been collecting for several years and help them visualize that so they can have at least some information to maybe get that plan started on. And we did this using our studio, which is um, a coding software. So once this survey that we've created collects more data, they'll be able to run it through our studio and generate all of the same graphs that we've already created for them. Okay, so on the background and methodology, um, currently the lake is collecting uh, very limited information on their visitors. Um, when If they come in and they're either camping or using um, their hall rentals or boating storage, a paying customer, they come into the shop and they fill out a form um, that we'll show you later. And it just, where they're from, um, their last name, and then just like what they're getting um, at the lake and things like that. So our survey will collect more information on that um, and like the various activities at the lake and we talked to Isaac about ensuring that we have all of those that most people are doing at the lake um, and then we designed the survey on Qualtrics um, to track all the lake activities and so here's the survey flow that um, everyone will go through just like the introduction and then it'll ask them if they're a visitor or not um, and then a visitor or resident and then kind of going off into um, different activities that they do because residents and visitors at the lake might participate in different ones um, their means of traveling where they come from things like that how many people are in their party and we'll get into that more So this is a QR code that will take you to our survey. If you want to pull out your phone, follow along. Um, we'll be doing the highlights, so if you don't want to, that's fine too. Um, but it looks like some people are gonna try, so I'll give you a minute to try it out. Um, and then if you do that, then you can see we have um, different questions we'll show if you select visitor or resident, so you can go back and forth um, and try out different paths. Um, which was a really fun part of this project for me, was just learning how to use Qualtrics um, with being able to select, like, if you choose this, then you'll see this question. But if you choose different things, then you'll see different ones. So I thought that was really cool. So um, we have in our survey different blocks, which just divides the question into sections. Um, and you won't see those sections if you're taking the survey. It's just on the back end to be able to organize it. Um, so one of our blocks is the demographics. Um, so this will ask about where the visitors are traveling from with their home location, um, their age, the relationship among the group, and then there's a question about their vehicle. 
so this map um, is actually in the survey. It's just a screenshot. Um, but that was some code that we put in that you actually can like scroll around like you're on Google Maps and just select exactly where you're from so we can get more accurate data about that than if they were just putting in their home city. Um, can you go back? Sorry. Um, so then with the age, um, that shows like not only the age of the people filling out the survey, but they can say like, I have this many children in this age group. So we're collecting the information for everyone and not just the one person filling out the survey. Um, and then the relationship with the group shows if they're uh, traveling with family. So it's a family vacation destination or a friends meetup. Um, and then the vehicle we were thinking maybe um, could show with some emissions stuff um, based on the age and the type of vehicle. All right, so then the next section is their itinerary. Um, and as you can see, we have a sequence of questions for uh, when they're planning on leaving and then the time they're planning on leaving. And then um, if they're camping, then you can see the second part down there will show um, how they're, like where they're staying at the lake. Um, so we have the date and time and then the camping also gives them different options for if they are using electricity um, or if they're using um, like a camper or renting a space there. Um, yeah, thanks. Sorry. All right, so then our next section is opinions. So we have one of our questions has them rank their choices and it's just a simple click and drag. Um, and then in the top three box, it'll actually show up as um, ranking one, two, and three, and those can be rearranged. Um, so we can see pretty easily and straightforward how they're choosing their activities. Um, and we have follow-up questions that they can select every single activity they participated in on this trip as well as previous trips. Um, so they can say, like, I've done all of these, but these are my top three. Or we can see they've only done three, and they're ranking them as their top three. Uh, okay. Uh, so then our last section is on the policy questions, which is basically how our visitors think the lake should be used um, or how they, their opinions on these specific questions. So we have um, a question about the geese that migrate in every year um, to see if we think that the residents specifically and our visitors think that we should be getting rid of them or if they're fine and we should help them. Um, and then we have... Um, trees, whether the dead or fallen trees should be removed or left as they are, um, which was something that Isaac, the superintendent, advised us about um, because there's, he said that the fishermen really like the trees because it makes little homes for all the fish, um, but it can be a problem for the boaters or for other visitors. Um, and then for boating, right now there's certain hours that motor boats can be on the lake causing wakes. Um, so obviously some people think that that should be extended and some people aren't fans. So we have that question. Um, and then we just have our algae blooms a problem for you, essentially. Um, and we're hoping that, sorry, we're hoping that by asking these questions it will give um, just a number of this many people said yes and this many people said no. Um, so that then they can put that in a management plan to say we have, you know, the percentage of people who think either way. Um, so we formatted it as yes, no for that reason to make it easier to um, analyze. And then we do have a space for them to elaborate if they want to explain their opinion. Okay, now I'm done. So when we talked to when we talked to Isaac as we first kind of started talking about how we're going to develop this survey, we wanted to know how he is as a person as a company is taking this data themselves and what we found is they're t uh, they have these pink sheets here and all of the data that, that they record from how much they how much they how long they stay how much they're paying is all recorded on these pink sheets that are about this big and he has hundreds or thousands that he has filled out through several years and this is they have good data on what each individual is using, but they don't have a way to display this in a meaningful format that's not stuck in a drawer with hundreds of these. 
so our purpose was kind of to get this paper format in a digital format that we can actually see develop and see in an easier way to find what's important to the lake, what's not important to the users, and uh, everything in, in between that. We also have sheets over here that will talk about uh, boats that are being used on the lakes, their boat registration number, their name, and it was the same issue with these pink sheets that there were hundreds of these papers but no way to display the data. So the way that we visualized this data was using, um, as I said, our studio, which is a free coding software. And we used both Tidyverse packages and ggplot. Tidyverse kind of helps you clean up your data and manipulate it in ways that are useful. And then ggplot creates um, these useful figures based on that data. So why this is important is because the lake will be able to continue entering that data um, that they already have, as well as the data that comes from our survey. And then they can just run the data through this code and it will generate a bunch of graphics for them um, so that they don't have to do any really statistical analysis or use Excel to create graphs. Um, it will just be a completely automated process. So here we have a map of where users are coming from. I think this is one of the most interesting maps that we have because it shows in a big, in a large scale where uh, visitors are coming from. We have the border of Kansas on the western edge and we have even users from central and southern Missouri coming to this lake. And I think it'll be interesting to see as more data develops how these uh, circles will grow and change. As we get more data, we may see that Wichita may shrink and Marion County may grow or maybe different areas of Kansas will change. Um, it's, and it, it'll be interesting to see how people are finding out about the lake and why they are coming, uh, for Marion County in particular, with multiple options around Kansas. Uh, for our data so far, we found that 97% are from Kansas and about a quarter of that is from Marion, uh, the city of Marion. And only a small percentage is out of state, but that may change as more data comes around. Uh, the number of nights is generally low. We usually see a sp spikes through the weekend, and the most po uh, popular time is just one or two nights. One of the more interesting points we found was this data right over here is the 14 two week limit. And once, they, once a user comes and stays for two weeks, they have to leave for at least a week and come back. But it would be interesting to see how many people use this on a repeating basis and uh, kind of make Marion County almost as a second home for themselves. Uh, most people, this data here is from users who would actually spend money at the lake. 70% uh, spent most on electricity, with about 16% being on boat storage and hall rental. And that boat storage and hall rental is where a lot of Marion County gets their uh, funds from. It's more of one of the more expensive and routinely based uh, activities that is rented out far in advance so they can have a more common income from that one location. And then I think one of the most important points from these graphs is the fact that they can change drastically as more data is entered in. As we talked about having thousands of these papers, we only had a few months of data input into the graphs we have now. The fact that Meredith's coding has this ability to automatically update as more data is put in, what we have now could drastically change once four or five years is put in rather than four or five months. Um, so kind of to conclude everything, like Cody said, we don't have uh, a ton of data right now, and so ideally to give Marion County um, Park and Lake a better lake management plan. We will have more data and start sending the survey out. Um, we decided as a group that right now is not really the best time to send out a survey since um, it's winter and most people don't really go to the lake um, at this time. And so finding the activities that they do now um, would it, like impact that than what they do in a more like appropriate lake season. Um, so Really, our survey is just to find the wants and needs of the visitors and the residents of the lake, um, and in doing so, collecting the data from 
the boating and the camping sheets uh, that Cody went into and the current visitors and then the future visitors by sending out the survey. Um, and it'll just, all this data will be an easy, easier vis visualiz visualization for the lake um, to make this plan. Um, and in the future, Um, the data that I, that I saw are therefore not from the survey that you have created, but they are from those small sheets. Is that you Yeah, that? that's exactly right. Yeah, so the, um, the graphs and charts up here that we showed you are the data from about two months of those paper forms. So um, we had the uh, lake superintendent put all of those forms in Excel or in Google Sheets. Um, so we had all of the information on the paper forms in Google Sheets and then Meredith's code is super cool and it takes all of that information straight from the Google Sheet and just graphs it. So when he adds more lines in the sheet, it'll just automatically update all these graphs, um, which is the beauty of it. But yeah, that's from the forms that we already have. Yeah, there are about 130 entries in the Excel sheet, yeah. Yep. So building off of that, what this is with your Google Sheet, is Isaac uh, kind of an administrator of that page? So after this semester is over, he can still continue to add to it and so forth? Yeah, so he's the lake superintendent, so he's plan he said he has a lot of downtime right now, so he's going to put more data in um, throughout the winter. Yes. How will changing between the, the, the survey and then the, the Google Sheets, will that affect anything at all? Or? So with the code, um, we have, we've created the survey in a way that you have to enter the data um, or your answers in a pretty specific format. So we will have to make slight changes to the code in terms of like column naming stuff, um, but it should be a still pretty automated once I change that. <coughs> technical question. Um, Coltrix is licensed here at K-State. Does the um, does Grand County Lake have a license for it? Or are we, like, is someone, after you graduate, going to help them administer that survey? So we are anticipating that the professor that helped us with this, this is a project that he can continue with. Um, and we'll have the survey done and uh, maybe come up with the time frame for when it needs to be ad administered um, and then he can help with that. And going on to that, um, ideally they'll have like a little kiosk in the um, place that like they come into in the office, thank you, in the office that uh, like people who are camping and have boats and stuff come into and they can fill it out right there. Um, and then for residents, we're kind of still on the fence of what they want. There's a lady who sends out all of like the bills and everything for that. And so maybe a paper survey is the way to do that. So it can get to everyone um, that it needs to be to. Any other questions? Yeah. So I was just curious. I, I know you've got some preliminary data and some preliminary graphs. A lot of what you did was laying the groundwork for future completion, I guess. But did, especially with some of your user data, did you surprise Isaac with anything? Was he, um, or did he, when you showed him these results, did he sort of figure out, and did he understand what was, did it jive with his understanding of, of what was going on at the, at the lake? <laughs> so I think that um, this that your question about uh, was the superintendent surprised about any of the um, results that we have found so far? I think that that's something that is common with um, rural tourism in general, especially in Kansas. That the superintendent knows what's happening at their lake. Like they know they have boaters. They know they have campers. It's not written down. It's not recorded. It's not used to collect more data or to make a management plan. Um, so I think that 
um, we were able to rely on his knowledge to kind of confirm that we were on the right track with this, um, which was very helpful. Does that cover that question? Yeah, and I, you know, a previous group had done kind of a preliminary type of, of survey, and it wasn't so much like uh, the data that you're showing here. Right. But a lot of the people from down the lake, Isaac, and so forth, were a little bit surprised at the diversity of, of priorities different users had. And that, I think that's something that will probably uh, come out even more once this your full survey is, is actually implemented, which mm -hmm. just raises yeah. more challenges for, for Isaac and the people down there to balance all of those mm -hmm. needs, especially between residents and visitors. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So on the policy questions, what if somebody just kind of doesn't really care about whether there's dead trees or not, or something? That's a good point. We should probably add another <laughs> option that is, you know, I'm apathetic about this. My memory serves me correctly. Isn't this a hot button issue, though, in Marion County Lake? Is, mm -hmm. is dead trees? Mm -hmm. And the geese, yeah, a lot of, geese. yeah, they want to open yeah. a, some sort of hunting season on the geese, so we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Oh. So our poster is up here, we're not going to present it, but if you want to check it out, we put in a lot of work on it, so anyone want to look at it, it'll be up there.